Celebrating 25 years and going strong, the Charleston Gospel Choir is once again lifting its voice in praise this Christmas. Let's welcome back our good friend and esteemed maestro, Lee Pringle, <laughs> president of the Charleston Gospel Choir, etc., etc., etc. Thank you for the, like, the new title, maestro. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> you are to me. I mean, I, and I know you yourself, you're a vocalist. Yes, yes. Um, but let's talk about the influence and the inspiration behind founding the gospel choir, why it was important for you to do so? Well, it started with our esteemed Charleston Symphony Orchestra, who's been around for over 80 plus years, I think 86 yeah. plus years. Um, many, many years ago, the president of MUSC's spouse, uh, Dr. Ray Greenberg and his wife, Leah Greenberg, brought the idea to the symphony. Wally Seinsheimer, who is a retired builder, many folks know his projects at One Vendu Range and many projects on the Kiowa Island, um, put the funding behind it, supported the idea. Wally had been involved with the Atlanta Symphony. So we were basically replicating it. And my very, very good friend, who I've got to give a shout out to, Daryl Edwards, mm -hmm. who was the CEO at the time for 12 years for the Charleston Symphony, really was the person who made it all come together. I started it with uh, Vivian E. Jones, who mm. was at Burke High School, the historic black high school, which is now multicultural, but it was sure. the, the kind of the feeding ground of the sound that we cultivated. And here we are a quarter century later, and it is going strong. I know. I and we'll, know. we'll talk about what you're going to be performing mm -hmm. and what you're featuring this year, because like you said earlier, you're coming back around full circle. Full circle. But for you, as a South Carolina born and raised mm -hmm. musician, why was gospel inter interesting to you and important for you to come back to? later in your career? Well, the African American spiritual for many black churches, not that we are a monolith, some black churches do anthems and high you know, esteem things. I was raised in a church where the spiritual and gospel music, in particular gospel mu music of the late 70s, was really popular. You know, uh, James Cleveland had gotten his first Grammy, which he became the first gospel singer to get a Grammy award. Wow. Um, and so the Andre Crouch, the Walter Hawkins, there are so many folks who kind of paved the road for a Whitney Houston to bring her lilt of, you know, singing R&B in a gospel way. So when you hear all those uh, flourishes that she did, the great Whitney Houston, who is someone that we're going to provide an ode to her because yes. of her 1996 Preacher's Wife soundtrack. Oh, that's great. And for people who are not as familiar with gospel music it's very different region by region we just we were talking about this before we got started and i didn't realize that but there is a reason why gospel in the south sounds different from gospel in the midwest or the northeast or wherever or even on the west coast yeah. well i'm obviously partial because i was born and raised on the Gullah Geechee corridor so from you know, virginia down to florida there's this influence of folks who came into this continent of, of north america and would disperse among many, many different uh, plantations. And I say the way in which gospel music has been interpreted is because those folks brought their dialects, their call and response. I call it an internal cadence. Mm -hmm. And some ethnomusicologists may disagree with me on this, but I think that is what makes the way in which black Americans deliver gospel music, why folks in Europe and other parts of the world look for black singers uh -huh. when they're thinking of gospel music. Yeah, it and can't be replicated. I don't think so. And I think we, we owe it to the Fist Jubilee singers who really gave us, yeah. uh, as black people in this uh, country, the launching pad to do these various things that we uh, I've been I've been very lucky to continue to uplift. Yes, and and you say some of the background singers that Mick Jagger. Uh, <laughs> you can't he, think of any big time rock and roll star, from Elvis Presley. Yeah. And a lot of folks, I mean, Elvis did gospel albums. Sure. They all wanted black gospel singers from the U.S. Mm. as their backup singers because it's a different lilt, a different delivery. But I always say, you know, you can teach through coaching. Anybody to sing gospel, but if you have that, I call it innate internal cadence that usually comes from the church. And from the church and from your soul and as well, soul, yeah. right? Yeah. yeah. Um, so tell us a bit more about this performance that's coming up. Where can people see it? When yes. is it? So this is our 25th, as you mentioned, right. and we're going to be at Ashley River Baptist Church. It's right next to Burlington Coat Factory. It used to be Steinmark. Oh, yes. Yeah, and uh, Dr. Reginald House will be our guest conductor. Our associate conductor is Jennifer Ankrum. 
and Jennifer's a native Charlestonian as well. She prepares the choir for the guest conductors. We're going to do an ode to Whitney Houston, so things from Do You Hear What I Hear, her uh, interpretation of Joy, even one of her mother's recordings on the Preacher's Rights soundtrack, uh, The Lord is My Shepherd, we will be doing, and many, many more uplifting, toe-tapping um, <sighs> songs with a community orchestra yeah. of musicians from around the region uh, will be a part of it. If that doesn't infuse you with the spirit of Christmas, <laughs> I don't know what would. I really don't. Uh, for people who are interested in joining the choir, for instance, and also who would like to yeah. support it, where should they go for more information? They should go to info at charlestongospelchoir.org. Org. And we are having auditions in January, so thank you for mentioning that. Great. And we would love to have you come join us and do some hard work. Yes, indeed. It's an all <laughs> volunteer it's group. It's too. an all volunteer group. So yes. everybody, come on, yeah. audition. Just, just do it. Just do it, even though you're nervous. Thank you so much, Lee. Thank it's you always all for great having to us. See. We'll have you back on to talk about the Color of Music Festival yes. very shortly. February. <laughs> February it is. We're back after this.